Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen and this is Medicine Walk. And for those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, this is Healing House Radio. So uh, Luna, our MCAT, has decided that she's going to chill today, which <laughs> yesterday she was a lot more active. But hey, everybody deserves a day off. Uh, Sam is over here waiting patiently because as soon as I'm done with this video, we're going to go outside and catch some sun. So today's topic, I wanted to um, talk about em empathy and different careers and different jobs. And what are some of the jobs that really align with empathic ability? And part of the inspiration for this was a lovely Facebook post that I got uh, in response to one of my Q&A questions, is empathy a benefit or a detriment? So um, I wanted to share what she wrote because it's just, it, it touched my heart. And I do believe that it really hits on a, a part of what, you know, what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to share. So what she wrote was, Beautiful message for empaths, Dr. Eileen. This reaffirmed I have great capabilities as a grounded empath. I used my gift countless times while working in acute psych. I also used in my personal life. I so wish we could use it to help ground this current COVID virus. This too will pass. Well, thank you, Rhonda. I really appreciate what you posted. And I also agree that empathy definitely has a role in a crisis. It can help to calm people. It can help to lift spirits. And by doing those, by reducing the stress level around it, by reducing, helping to bring down some of the anxiety, it really does make a difference in our body's ability to fight illness and to be able to recover. And I found it really interesting that you brought up that you use these abilities around those who really need help grounding. And I was kind of, you know, struck by the idea of how many different types of careers and jobs are really supported by empathy. Now, honestly, any job and any career can be enhanced with the ability to resonate with others. Whether you're a cashier in a department store, which I spent a lot of years doing that, or whether or not you're, you know, a leader of a corporation. Often people who are empathic tend to be drawn into careers that involve healing, that involve counseling, um, and it could be any career that could benefit from that. I remember when I worked in what used to be Mervyn's, uh, I got a job there in 1981 and it was very cool because, you know, I had before then I'd worked in like, you know, I worked at an amusement park. And so this was like my first, what I considered my first real, you know, grown up job. And I, it was amazing how you come across people with a whole lot of different types of energies coming in, you know, everything from the, you know, the excited person who's, you know, trying to find a nice outfit for a special event or the bedraggled parent who's dragging screaming kids behind them, trying to get them set up for, you know, the new school year. It was important for me to be able to resonate and connect with the people who I was dealing with because then I felt that I could best help them. I mean, I was customer service. And when somebody comes up to your desk or up to your register, fuming and raging over the fact that they want to do a return and they don't have a receipt and they're angry and they're frustrated or they haven't been able to find a salesperson to help them to immediately be able to connect with that person, to hear them out, to immediately say, I am so sorry you had this experience. Let me help you. You know, let me do my best to help you. And then add that piece of resonance where, you know, you meet them where they are because empathy gives us the ability to meet people where they are and then 
invite them into a more neutral space. So I was well known for my ability to soothe customer service issues. And I would sometimes be asked to come to dis different departments to be able to speak and talk somebody down and, you know, acknowledge them and help them feel as though that, you know, they had a good shopping experience. And when I was working as a teacher, a preschool teacher, being able to empathically connect with children, first off, it is a wonderful feeling. It allows you to be able to reconnect to that child within yourself. And at the same time, be able to help bring out the best in the student because that's what they want. You know, ultimately students, especially young students, want to please their teacher. They want to be acknowledged. And, you know, if somebody is going through a very difficult time, then often by resonating with them, it makes it a lot easier than having to correct or reprimand. So the idea that if somebody is going through something, no matter what their age, you know, whether you're an irate person in a department store or you're, you know, a child in a preschool class, either way, the empath can connect with the child within that person because that's the one who's upset. That's the one who's having fear. So being able to resonate with that part of that person really enhances the ability to move forward productively, whether it's a happy customer or a happy parent because their child had a good day and that their child felt valued and is showing conf more confidence. So what are some of the other jobs that are good with empathy, say specifically? As I said, you know, healers, counselors, doctors, um, those who work human resources would be an excellent place for an empath. Because once again, you are dealing with, you know, settling conflicts, helping find solutions. Empaths help people find solutions that work for them because you understand what that person's perspective is and you can more easily understand what it is they need in order to believe that they have a successful outcome. Now, empaths also make great salespeople and I will, you, I will kind of bring in that idea or the cautionary statement that uh, quite honestly used car salesmen, the most successful ones are empaths. And they will utilize their ability. As I said, empath has both light and shadow. And they can utilize their ability to persuade you that, yes, that car is really the one you want, even though it may not be the car that's best for you. Empathy can be neutral. And it is applied as the person or the intention of the person who is applying it. So... Yeah, it's interesting because when I deal with salespeople, especially like um, um, commission salespeople, the ones who I know are, are empaths. And yes, you can you can once you become managed at it, you can identify when somebody is empathically pushing you. And I have dealt with salespeople who come in and they do that, you know, that sales thing. And I just look at them and I kind of smile and nod and I will push back. And my pushback will just be, don't do that. And I'll see the person hesitate. And that that's when I know that they're conscious of what they're doing. And the conversation ends, the sale ends there. When you are a managed empath, you become very clear when somebody else is trying to use it to manipulate you. And you can take action at that point. My action is usually a slight pushback and I walk away, but I want them to understand that I know what they're doing and I'm aware of it and I answer it in the way that they are sending it out. So it's important to one, recognize that, you know, how you use your empathy is going to be up to you. Empathy is a tool. It is something that can be applied. 
And as I said, it is applied based on the intention and the spirit of the person who is wielding it. And not everybody does that from a good space. I mean, are there some wonderful people who sell used cars who just want to help people find a good car? Yes. Are there empaths doing that? Yes. And the positive side of that, and you know, whether it's a used car or, or a house or anything like that, when it is something that people are going to be very conscious of the price, an empath can be able to help that person. You know, maybe they're looking at, a, at one car and you really know that another car is better for them. So you open up that option. You don't make them decide. You open their mind and their spirit to considering more than one option. And the option remains up to them. You know, if you, you know, I have a friend who is empathic who for a while sold cars. And he said that he would apply it when, you know, there would be a couple coming in and, you know, and she's very pregnant and he's looking at, you know, the two seater, you know, two door, you know, little kind of hot roddy car. And he sees the wife kind of, you know, rolling her eyes and, you know, patting her stomach. Then he would very gently, you know, say, you know what, that is a great car, but I think there's one that you might really be interested in. Let me, let me, you know, see, cause you know, and he would focus on, it's like, wow. And you've got this kid on the way and you know, what is, what, you know, have you thought of names yet? And you know, Hey, have you, you know, are you going to name it after a family member? And you know, so he would engage, you know, the, the husband into a conversation and into a mindset and into a resonance of paternal pride and, you know, and the idea of, you know, taking care of his child. And it's like, well, you know, and safety is an issue. And the next thing you know, he's looking at four door sedans that are safe, practical, and his wife is very, very happy. So the idea that, you can be able to you can be able to persuade and still give someone their choice he said ultimately and you know once he saw that you know the dad was kind of more in in line or at least open to looking at something other than what he had fixated on he cut off his empathic and you know the resonance and allowed this person it's like okay now at least you can see the two options now you two make this and at that point he excused himself he said you know what why don't you two talk about this i'm gonna go and um you know i have a call that i have to make and i'll check back with you in just a few minutes so he left and left them to make the choice and you know that that's where i believe empathy really shines is our ability to help someone open up their mind to all the options that they have rather than fixate on one thing. You know, it's a big decision. So for him to be able to allow, help somebody broaden their viewpoint from the blinders, get those blinders off and look at all of the possibilities. So, um, Empathy applies in every single thing that you could possibly do. And there are a lot of opportunities for people to apply empathy, you know, even in situations in the military. I've known military people who are very strong empaths because at that point, the idea is you need to help somebody be able to go into very, very difficult situations. And, you know, I grew up an Air Force brat, my father and my mother were both in the Air Force. That was how they met. And so I have a very, very, very special place in my heart for the military. And I honor them. And, you know, whatever you feel about the politics behind it, honor those who are serving. Honor those who are doing a very difficult job far away from the ones that they love because they believe in it. So, you know, when you're an empath in that situation, you know, it's important to be able to, you know, incorporate that because that helps you lead. It helps you understand the people who are following you into very difficult situations and to be able to help them maximize what is within them and to help them bring out the best in them and to create that team, that, that, you know, that unit that you are, you know, that you're creating 
to help a- accomplish things. So um, no matter what, the ability to engage empathy is going to help in whatever job you have. And if you want to, you know, kind of explore different jobs, look at it from the point of view is how will my empathy helps me to do this particular job? And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to contact me on this or any other topic. So that's it for today. And uh, I hope that you guys are also enjoying the daily questions that I've been doing. And if you have any questions, if you have any well, comments or concerns, you can place them in the comment section and I do check those and I promise I will respond to them. You can also reach me through my Twitter link, which is in the description, as well as my Facebook group, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. So thank you for joining me and napping Luna. (laughs) And as always, I wish you balance and I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you and be blessed.